Welcome back to our press preview. Joining us tonight, uh, Christina and Matthew. I think we've done quite well to have the whole first half of the press preview without mentioning Jeremy Corbyn. Amazing. However, independent front page, Corbyn loses fifth of Labour voters. Poll shows three quarters of Britons think he doesn't look like a future PM. Discuss. Shall I kick off on that one? Yeah, it's not great reading for Corbyn, although the polls have gone in the direction of Labour since the leadership election finished. So it was even worse a few weeks ago for Labour. Um, but when can I just, when he wasn't leader. Yeah, so when the leadership right. election was on, Labour were really trailing in the polls. Yeah. Now that he's won, they've recovered a bit, but not sufficiently. So it's now 59 to 41, I think, in the, against Labour. But can I just say, taking a step back after this extraordinary and totemic first week, that I'm not really that bothered about his sex life or about whether he sings a national anthem. I'm much more interested in, are his policies good or bad? I happen to think, personally, that they could be damaging to Britain. But I do think, if we're going to critique him, let's critique him for the right reasons. His policies, I think there's I ample material. However, the, the, the counter-argument is that, as a leader, exactly. all those other things Absolutely come into play, right. whether Absolutely you sing the right. national anthem, whether you tie your tie correctly. Right. What, I, really? I don't think you're... I, I think he, when the presidential he, style of politics. Yeah, exactly. Right? I think the sex life, that's... Well, there's a wonderful piece by Linda Grant today actually saying that essentially the only thing you could do when you remember the Labour Party in the 70s was have sex because you went to all these incredibly boring meetings. And so she said she sometimes. I missed out. I was a member of the Labour Party. Yeah. I, mean, it it's in, I think it's in today's Guardian or, yeah. or online. Right. And, um, and it is very I funny. I was a member in, and in she the said 80s. That she yeah, said so you that don't that remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, you were in the wrong places. Yeah, but, um, exactly. Or at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I disagree with you, Matthew. I think, I think the economic policy is an absolute disaster. And we'll get on to Alistair Darling in a, in a moment. But. Um, but I think it absolutely does matter whether you sing the national anthem, not whether you're a monarchist or not. Plenty of people are not monarchists. I'm, not, I'm a fan of the Queen. I wouldn't say I'm particularly a monarchist. But I think it really does matter because it is about respect for your country and it's about respect for the sacrifice Her people Majesty's have made. Opposition. Yes. Well, Christina, Her Majesty's Opposition. Christina, may I ask you this question? Do you think it is possible for somebody to be at a service of that kind and to reflect upon the great sacrifice that our servicemen made without singing the anthem, and for others not to give a stuff about those service people and to sing the anthem with gusto think, and to I go through the motions that, for PR reasons. I think reasons. all of that is perfectly possible. There's a very good column by Philip Collins in today's Times when he says, and I, I remember going to church as a, a teenager and refusing to sing any of the hymns or saying the prayers because I thought it was all nonsense. And that's fine, you know, no 13-year-old wants to be a hypocrite. When you're a 66-year-old prime minister in waiting apparently then you know you have to do a few things to to show that you respect your country and I don't think it's good enough actually most people in this country do believe whether we do or not most people in this country do believe in the royal family they are monarchists and if you want to get elected as prime minister then you probably ought to pay some lip service to what they believe if you don't if you don't want to fine but then don't expect so to what, be elected. So mime to the national anthem you mean is a lip service? Like John, John Redwood did. <laughs> Uh, with the Welsh one. Well, that was well, the Welsh one. England footballers, by the way. I know some of the great patriots in the England football team who really care about country, who don't necessarily sing the national anthem and feel it's it's a sort of an affront to their sense of patriotism that they're being told by the media And this guy to. is going to kneel before the Queen as part of the Privy Council? I bet he doesn't. Right, OK. Um, well, this, this was actually quite interesting to look at the Rugby World Cup. However, <laughs> we are going to go to the left, if you pardon the expression, and there's more on Mr Corbyn. He has two days to get real, says Alistair Darling. Well, this was a very interesting interview that mm. Alistair Darling gave on the Today programme. Was it this morning? Or yes. yes. Yeah, this morning. And, and he, I think I'm a big fan of Alistair Darling, actually. I think he, he, would, I think he, he would have been a very good candidate for leader, actually. But he certainly was very very competent in his role and he's a very articulate man I have never heard him sound so incoherent as he sounded this morning because clearly he didn't want to be incredibly negative and critical but he could not string together a coherent sentence in the face of what has happened and the sort of earthquake that has hit the party that he's devoted his adult life to and Is clearly... that because maybe they don't understand yet? Is that why it's incoherent? that they don't actually understand what's, what's happening. Well, that's exact. Well, I think that's partly it. But also, as he says, there is no coherence coming out of, of, of the, the current party at the moment in terms of economic policy. So, uh, uh, what they can measure, your, your issue about the, politi the policies? I, I, you the know, I, I think I disagree with that a little with Darling's analysis. I think there is a coherent policy coming out from Corbyn. I, I think he's an intelligent, knowledgeable, 
decent, humane man. I just think that the package is the wrong one. He wants to put personal income tax up. He wants to put corporation tax up. He's talking about quantitative easing, people's quantitative e people's well, QE. People's, bank, e people's QE, yeah. but even in an upturn, I think that compromises the independence of the Bank of England. I think that could be a dangerous for interest rates. Zimbabwe money printing. I don't think people necessarily get that. And like, you know, the 43 top economists, including mm. two Nobel laureates, have backed it. All I would say is, I just feel that that won't help the people that he wants right. to, but I do think it's a coherent economic but plan. But should, right. should we examine why this actually could be quite an important area of policy? If we look at the front page of The Guardian, uh, this is the warning from mm. the Bank of England's chief economist, basically saying we could see a cut in interest rates to zero, even negative interest rates, because of what he sees are the, um, the risks on the... Uh, horizon. I'm just looking at, yeah, the downside risk, as he's called them. I've discussed uh, there could be a need to loosen rather than tighten monetary reins as the next step to support UK growth. Well, if we're seriously looking at having to, having to keep interest rates at zero or negative levels, negatives, I'm sure, being deliberately provocative, because that would actually mean that you would pay to keep your money in a bank, bank account rather yeah. than getting any interest for it. And then he says that because, because of the risks of people withdrawing their money from accounts, you'd have to get rid of cash and you'd have to have some kind of Bitcoin system. So this is all being quite dramatic. But it certainly indicates that the economy is in no state to take people's quantitative easing, which would almost inevitably be inflationary. It's quite interesting, just, just thinking back to my economics undergraduate degree, Keynes, the great economist, Keynes, did economics, worry yeah. that in particularly dangerous downturns, cutting interest rates to try and get the economy moving is like pushing on a string. Because if people don't want to spend, you can keep cutting interest yeah. rates, it won't make any and difference. they tried it in Japan for 10 years, didn't work with their economy. So one so, wonders yeah. whether or not, I mean, okay. QE was one of the responses to the fact that interest rates weren't having a, uh, an effect on yeah. expenditure. Welcome back to our press preview with uh, all the front pages with Christina and Matthew. And we've done pretty well yet again to have a first half without mentioning Jeremy Corbyn. But here we go again. There he is on page 10 and 11 of The Times. Corbyn's ship sets sail, but the scent of mutiny hangs in the air. Uh, right. Fair? Unfair? Concentrating on... The we're personality not, rather than policy? We're not going to talk about his sex life in any way whatsoever. Um, there, is, uh, there are big clashes with the party. The Labour Party staff are literally in mourning. They wore black, apparently, for the announcement. And, um, and there was a very... Well, the Parliamentary Party? Yes. And there was a very unfestive party on Monday, apparently, with warm Prosecco and cake. And the warm Prosecco was not drunk. And people who work at Labour Party headquarters are in pieces because it's rank amateurism all the way along the line and nobody knows how anything is done and so it's not really a recipe. Although uh, Chief Whip is the Chief Whip that was there in place, uh, there are senior figures such as Hilary Benn who have stayed on. Well, there um, aren't many of them, are there? Hilary Benn and Andy Burnham, who we don't know exactly what he believes anymore. Um, Angela Eagles is there. So, I mean, there are those. But uh, what, what I'm trying to say is, you know, is this uh, media fascination with his personality actually um, overstressing the, the political situation? Because you were saying, Matthew, earlier, let's you know, talk about his policies. Let's see what discussion is about policy. That's just not happening, is it, at the moment? I, I, I think it's not happening enough. And I genuinely don't care. He hasn't mentioned any policy, though. Well, I, he has been pretty specific. I mean, some of the policies are quite radical, particularly on economics. But I'm not that bothered about his sex life or whether he sings the national anthem. I am very interested in his policies. But Matthew Paris, his column is mm -hmm. puffed on page one of the Times. And I think he's arguing tomorrow that this could be the best thing that happens to Labour, a Corbyn car crash, so that the party can rise phoenix-like from the flames, show its moderation, its fiscal restraint, but have a leader that's But that's what they thought was going to happen after Miliband's disastrous election result, and it went the other exactly. way. Exactly, and, and also so that's what did happen for 13 years under, under Tony Blair and then Gordon Brown, but there is no, there seems to be no appetite for that at the moment. Look at, Liz Kendall was the Blairite, 4% mm. of the vote, 4% of the vote. But, I think the trouble is where the nation is, is not where the party is. They're completely at odds with each other. Mm. And so we now have a democratic decision made by the Labour Party, or at least by a lot of people who spent three quid to vote in this election, which in no way represents how, how traditional Labour voters feel. 
and that I think is a bit of a tragedy. Well, but interestingly, it does reflect our tra traditional Labour Party members, not the voters. No, yeah. voters, no that's, voters, abso that's absolutely voters. right. And it yeah, was but, but, a, it was but, but members are nothing. Members are like a no, drop quite. in an ocean. And I mean, as a Labour Party member, former parliamentary candidate, I've got to tell you that 79, 83, 87, 92 is a cumulative effect of those four defeats that battered are you still the Labour a Party Are you still members. a Labour Party member? I think I do still have a member. And who did you vote for? I voted for Labour. No, I mean in the election, in the leadership election. In the leadership election, I didn't vote. Mm. I didn't vote. Why not? Feels like I've been interviewed. <laughs> she's, turned, she's turned into Jeremy Pankford <laughs> all of a sudden. Why not? I wouldn't have voted for Corbyn. I'd have probably no. gone for Kemp. Well, if is, I had is voted it the case, as some have as said, that of all four, there was not one candidate that really inspired mm. people? Yes. Yeah. As perhaps Blair and the whole New Labour idea had. No, but Corbyn really new. did. Ins Corbyn massively inspired people. Corbyn got won on the first round with 56 or 59 percent right. or whatever. So Corbyn really, really did inspire okay. people. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, FT Weekend Edition is just a little pen portrait there. Sadiq Khan, the mayor, all. Uh, hopeful dispute shadow chances ideas John McDonnell um, because he wants to be the most business friendly mayor of all time so a little bit more indication of varying paths being taken should we say and the two paths are really about what economic policy should be directed at and I think Blair Sadiq Khan they're about growth dynamism incentives trying to get the economy moving which provides the income that can then be redistributed. And I think right. Corbyn and, and, and McDonald are much more into the old redistribution, that you have a certain size of cake, get as much to the yeah. people who need. And you know what we know from the statistics, that when you put the marginal rate of income tax up, it does virtually nothing for revenues. Mm. When well, it even slows the economy down. Mm. When Thatcher say, cut yeah. taxes, revenues went through the roof. Mm. And I, I think that is the debate within the Labour Party. And Sadiq Khan, because he knows he's got business in London. Exactly. Yeah. And the he's city of London. Yeah. And it's, it's fine Meanwhile, idea. at the top of the page, uh, you've spotted mm. another far-left figure, uh, and that is uh, Alexis Tsipras, uh, Syriza addressing a final election rally before he goes on what they say is an expensive holiday. Um, I, I think he's... Has he gone? Or I, I thought he'd been on a summer holiday in a wealthy ship down. owner's villa. And, and he also happily sends his son to private school, which at least we can say Jeremy Corbyn did not. Yes. But um, I do think it's... And, of course, Diane Abbott also sent her son to private school. I think people are perfectly free to do that, but then don't lecture other people about... Um, what, what they should be what doing. What they should yeah. and shouldn't do. Yeah.